Good morning. Merry Christmas. You know, uh, growing up, my childhood pastor told me once, the people that worship on Christmas morning have a really special relationship with Jesus. And so I, I think about that on Christmas morning. Um, and so uh, welcome to God's house where uh, he serves us with his word and his sacrament on one of the most celebratory favorite days of the whole year. And so uh, I'm thrilled that God has brought us together on this occasion and this day. Um, our service is printed out entirely for you in the bulletin, uh, so you can pretty intuitively follow along, with one exception that the songs are going to be in the uh, maroon books and f uh, not the Bible. Uh, well, that's good too, but um, the maroon books in front of you. Um, our theme this morning takes a little bit of a different pivot turn from last night. Last night we looked specifically at the, uh, the narrative of the angels and the shepherds and the birth of the Christ child. And today we're looking at what it means that his promises were fulfilled through the ages. And so we have that kind of iconic, beautiful John 1 text as our, our gospel lesson. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and so forth. And so that's a little bit how we uh, are going to start our time together this morning, with that on our hearts and that on our minds, that God loved us individually, specifically so much that he sent his son uh, for us, promised through the ages, and it changes even this morning for us. And with that in our hearts and minds, I invite you to stand as we begin our service together.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand to share the peace and joy of that forgiveness with one another. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice together, they sing for joy, for eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. 
This is the word of the Lord. Lord. Please read responsibly. I will tell you of the decree the Lord said to me. You are my son. Why do nations rage? The kings of the earth set themselves. Let us burst their bonds apart. The Lord holds them in derision. Well, okay. The Lord holds them in derision. Okay. Then he will speak to them in this in his wrath. As for me, I have set my king. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. You shall break them with a rod of iron. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Serve the Lord with fear. Kiss the Son. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. This is the word of the Lord. Long ago, at many times, from the epistle in Hebrews, long ago, at many times and in many places, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the best of all things through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For which and for to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe you will roll them up, like a garment they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory 
glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess together our common Christian faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. Please be seated for the hymn.
Please have a seat. Grace to you and peace from God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to focus on our gospel reading today and those words that says, And the word became flesh. So this time of year, you know how it is. As of yesterday, a lot of people were still going in and out of stores, trying to get that perfect gift for that perfect person or for friends and family and trying to just make it right and just for the sole purpose so they can share. It's a moment in, in our year where we come together with friends, family, and we do all the festivities. We have dinners, we have breakfast, we have lunches and all that great stuff just so we can enjoy the festivities. Christmas is what we call it. And in the middle of this, you know, as we're in and out of these stores, we say, hey, we're only going to buy this many presents because I only have this much money set in place. And quite frankly, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes we go overboard and we buy, you know, that we set that budget bottom line and we buy that gifts and in more than what we expected but the point is that we got everything that we could have buy and that we wanted to buy and so here we are um, you know we get the gifts Christmas is around you know well today we did not get to open our presents yet but you see the faces the reactions of the people hoping they're happy with their gifts but there's always that one gift, right? That one person that says, oh, it's not what I wanted. You know, the gift is not appreciated and that kind of ruins the moment. It ruins the meaning of giving that Christmas gift, right? And, and it gives you an unsatisfied feeling that you did not do your work right. Well, even though we don't appreciate the celebration of Christmas, you know, that, that moment that we realize that people or that person did not appreciate that gift, instead of celebrating who we are celebrating in this season and what we are celebrating, you know, for born unto us as a savior, that is what we're celebrating. And it's more than just the friends, the family, the, the festivities, the holidays that we're doing. It's more than that. It, it, it is Jesus coming down to this earth and abiding among us. And so in our gospel reading today, we have an introduction about Jesus that John makes and it solely fits him alone. You know, John in these verses does not hold back but lays it out for us in a poetic way that almost sings to us the great news of Jesus. Jesus being in one substance with the Father, he that has been, he that is with God, and he that is God from the beginning. I hope I didn't lose you there. He was not an afterthought. You see, Jesus was not after the fact. Jesus or something that God forgot. God did not forget Jesus. Jesus is being one with the fathers, was sent to the world in this world that is only darkness. How so? We got the sun, we got the lights. Well, when we talk in the world of darkness, we're talking about the heart of men. And that is what Jesus came to shine light on. And so in the darkness, he will bring light to all that receive the light. The great promise declared here to all that will believe in this light. He gave them the right to be children of not just 
a regular person in this earth or some kind of dynasty. He gave them the right to be children of God. To those that believed in his name, and that is Jesus. In this day that we as believers in Christ celebrate, though it may not be the exact day that Jesus was born, but we remember the day that the word that it talks about in our gospel today became flesh and dwell among us. We could only observe his glory as the one and only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Jesus, the perfect gift to the world from the father. This gift did not require us being part of any special list or being good throughout the year. Isn't that awesome? So, the day arrived. The present giving did not go well as you thought it was going to go. We fell short. How on earth can people feel, be so ungrateful, you feel? Or you say, how can someone not be happy with what they get? You may ask. After all, it is Christmas. You didn't have to buy this gift. But yet failing to realize that you are that person at times. That has been given the gift of Jesus and you don't seem to be happy about it. And you wanted God to give you something else for Christmas. Maybe it was a better health. Your health hasn't been great this year. Or maybe the position at work, you wanted a better position and because we want a better lifestyle. Or the neighbor next door doesn't seem to move away fast enough. You know that neighbor that just bothers you every time. And so another Christmas comes by and we're about to finish another Christmas here. Day, I'm sorry and you still don't get what you want. The gift of Jesus is part of an event of the church here. That's all the way, that's the only way that you see it. And the gift does not make it out of that box. This is that one gift that you were not happy with. And so that big gift will remain there for the next year. But I thank God this morning because he is not like us since God is not like us human God tells you today that even though your health has not improved he is still the faithful shepherd guiding you each day even though you did not get the position you've been wanting well he still says to you today he's still providing Oh, and that neighbor that you are not too fond of? Well, he says to you, he is also his creation and he wants you to be a light to him. So God does not get bothered when we don't receive God's grace for our lives. God does not take Jesus away because he saw our ingratitude. But he also leaves him there for us all the time. God does not hold a grudge against us because we continue to look at all the earthly things and materialistic things of life and never at Jesus. The good news to the world is not taken away from us at any moment, but it remains here forever. It is here to dwell among us and not just in this time that we have in this earth, but for eternity. John saw Jesus in the flesh. We have him in our hearts because of his promise. Jesus being that gift that keeps on giving. Yes, hour by hour, day by day, month after month, and year after year. And guess what? For all eternity. Jesus came to the world in the most modest way, yet the world was made by him. And many took that for granted. 
but because he became flesh and later on to lose that same flesh and later beat death, we now have the eternal gift of life. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because your steadfast love is better than life. For you have been my help. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Save your people and bless your heritage. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. And to your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting, to part in his peace and his joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you, defend you from all evil, and bring you to everlasting life.